FBI Director James Comey, former Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, and the current Deputy Attorney General and Trump appointee Rod Rosenstein, among others, signed off on the renewals. The question is whether Rosenstein, who is charged with all things Russia with his boss's recusal, would support a second special counsel that would investigate Rosenstein's own actions and decisions. Today, the White House Press Secretary said the evidence calls out for outside review. They failed to disclose to the judge that the dossier was funded by the Clinton campaign and the DNC, even as it was being used to spy on people associated with the Trump campaign. Obviously, those details alone uh, show that the process needs to be looked at closely and reformed. Key section of the letter also got my attention because it appears the chairman want a second special counsel to go even further and investigate whether Hillary Clinton and her team got special treatment in the FBI email case. The letter reads in part, quote, to review decisions made and not made by the Department of Justice and the FBI in 2016 and 2017, including decisions to charge or not charge, and whether those decisions were made consistent with the applicable facts. The focus here is on a system that may be broken, not relitigating the outcome, Martha. Catherine, thank you very much. You're welcome. Joining me now is one of the people behind that big push to get a second special counsel, House Oversight Chairman and House Intel Committee member Trey Gowdy. Uh, Congressman, good to see you tonight. Thank you for being yes, here. Thank um, you. So you have, as I said in the intro, you've been defending the Mueller investigation and believing that he uh, is handling it well. You have no reason to not believe that. So why the need for a second special counsel? Well, Robert Mueller's jurisdiction is set out in the document that, that was issued by Rod Rosenstein, and it's pretty specific. He has to stay within the strictures of his jurisdiction. He can't expand it on his own. I, I guess in theory, Rod Rosenstein or Jeff Sessions could expand his jurisdiction, but he can't do it himself. I think the better course is to have second special counsel. Let Mr. Mueller keep looking into Russian interference. Let him keep looking for evidence of collusion. But have a separate uh, special counsel look into decisions made and not made in 2016 with respect to the Bureau and the Department. And that decision would fall to Rosenstein? You know what? I'm not sure Jeff Sessions couldn't do it, Martha. For this reason, um, my qualms aren't necessarily uh, the fact that it was a Russia investigation or, or a FISA application on Carter Page. It could be a bank robbery. It could be a human trafficking ring. I want to look at the process and the procedures and whether or not the Bureau handled things the right way, regardless of what kind of case it is. I think Sessions actually could appoint special counsel. I mean, Rod Rosenstein cannot supervise special counsel because he's a potential right. witness. So Sessions is recused from making decisions but, about you know, Russia, but he's not recused from appointing special counsel. It, it sounds, he, he did an interview with Shannon Bream, which is going to air tonight on her show. Um, and, and he basically said that, well, let, let's play it. And, and you can hear what he said when asked about this. I have appointed a person outside of Washington many years in the Department of Justice to look at all the allegations that the House Judiciary Committee members sent to us, and we're conducting that investigation. He's talking about Michael Horowitz. Uh, he says we already have somebody doing that. Yeah, I think the world of Michael Horowitz, I actually did not sign the letter that Attorney General Sessions is referencing, although most judiciary members did. Michael Horowitz is fantastic. He is great for looking at matters within the department, but he has no jurisdiction over witnesses who have left. You just mentioned Jim Comey and Andy McCabe. They're both gone. Jim Rubicki is gone. Uh, there are, uh, uh, Loretta Lynch is gone. Sally Yates is gone. There, there are 24 witnesses that I've identified that Michael Horowitz would not have jurisdiction over, and he can't compel their attendance and their testimony. Martha, that says nothing about the State Department angle or Fusion GPS or anyone not in the department. So with all due respect to Attorney General Sessions, Michael Horowitz is not special counsel. All he can do is look at the department and the FBI and nothing outside of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess... You know, one of the glaring questions is, is why wouldn't they? You know, why wouldn't they want to make sure that their own entity had had operated properly? And if it hasn't, want to shed light on that. And when you when you raise questions, as Catherine Harris pointed out in her reporting about the Hillary Clinton investigation and whether or not it was completely above board or whether or not there was some sort of bias shown towards her during the course of the election. Yeah, I don't have any interest in relitigating the decision, the right. conclusion reached by Jim Comey, but I have a lot of interest in understanding why in May of 2016, you admitted that you had the evidence of a crime, but had already determined you were not, not, not going to prosecute. I, I would hope every American would ask the FBI, if you have evidence of a crime, 
two months before you interview the target of the investigation, why have you already concluded you're not going to go forward? That is a fair question, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or, or Bull Moose Party. That Every American should want to have confidence in the FBI and Absolutely. DOJ. And but, if they're prejudging outcomes, you shouldn't. Well, what, what about, you know, the letter talks about bias, concern about bias. Bias, you know, we've all seen the struck and page emails and the text messages, but bias and then turning that bias into action is a very difficult thing to prove, isn't it? Uh, it is. Uh, this bias, I would argue, Martha, trends towards animus. Uh, it, it's not simply bias. It, it is an overt disdain talking about impeachment the morning after the election. And that's more than bias. That is flat out animus. But aren't there, there also are elements, I'm sorry to interrupt, but aren't there also elements where it sounds like they're supportive of Hillary Clinton or negative on Hillary Clinton? And couldn't they use that to balance and say, look, you know, we, we were torn on this just like most Americans, but it didn't affect our job? Well, I think the preponderance of the text are anti-Trump. Now, whether or not they episodically criticize, you know, they criticize Ted Cruz. I think they may have even criticized a Congress, uh, God forbid, once or twice. So clearly they had problems with lots of people, but they hated Donald Trump. And what's important about that is one of them had signed up to investigate Donald Trump while the other was a lawyer. So I, 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 bias is one thing, animus is another. It is possible for that animus to impact your decision making. Look at what Strzok himself said. He had no interest in participating in an investigation that would exonerate Donald Trump. This is a counterintelligence expert who doesn't want to participate in investigating what Russia did if it doesn't result in the indictment of Donald Trump. That is an unprecedented level of animus. Thank you very much, Chairman Gowdy. Good to see you as always. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So yes, here now with more on all these questions, Jonathan Turley, constitutional law attorney and law professor at George Washington University. Um, good to see you tonight, Jonathan. Thanks, and Thanks, welcome Martha. back to the program. Um, do you think they're going to get this special counsel, second one? I would think that it would be difficult. Uh, I, it, I, it's clear that a combination of Congress and the Inspector General, Mr. Horowitz, can investigate uh, these types of claims. I think that, however, the, there are two good arguments for the appointment of a special counsel, one in this letter and one that's not. The one in the letter is it is certainly true that Horowitz cannot really exercise jurisdiction over people like James Comey and others uh, who have left the Justice Department. That's a, that's a very good point. There's a lot of witnesses that would fall into the purely voluntary cooperation category. And you might need more than voluntary cooperation. The other reason is that we are a nation divided. I mean, half the people in this country believe that the FBI is biased and was targeting Trump and Republicans. The other half believes that there was something criminally wrong about the Trump campaign and Russian interference. Both have raised legitimate concerns. We're not going to get past this. We're not going to get out of this quagmire until we can offer the American people an independent review. And I don't think Congress at this point is going to offer that. I think that Congress, there's so much infighting, so many leaks, so many spins. I don't see a point in which the American people are going to say, all right, I get it. I think I know the facts here. So that does weigh heavily here. But at the end of the day, I think that a strong argument could be made that there's not a compelling need as long as Congress and the Inspector General both pursue these questions. All right, let, let me ask you about something that the New York Times is reporting tonight that is uh, just crossed a few moments ago that suggests that President Trump may have spoken to some of the witnesses about the matters that they discussed with the special counsel. Problematic? It is problematic. Uh, there has been there have been serious problems in minding the line uh, when it comes to these types of uh, contacts, not just in the statements that are attributed to President Trump with regard to Mr. Comey and others, but also speaking with witnesses. That's a very clear line that the White House counsel and other attorneys are supposed to watch and maintain. There should not be this cross-pollinization between people who are witnesses. Um, and that's why we build what's called a wall around witnesses to say, this is off really off the table. You can't talk to others, uh, particularly the president, in this type of investigation. So it is problematic. But it, it, that's an example of what has long concerned me about the lack of control and discipline. Those types of slips 
are making, are prolonging this investigation, yeah. fueling allegations, when we still don't have a, a clear crime uh, that uh, is linked to the president. Yeah, uh, they make things more difficult for themselves uh, at times, and the, you know the, these stories are, um, you know, problematic to be sure. Uh, Jonathan Turley, always good to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Martha. Okay, so it is being billed as the biggest tech merger ever, but some say this is really because.